and uh, I'm the CEO of Lipum, and we are based in Umeå and focused on chronic inflammatory diseases. Our lead candidate is a technically human antibody and it directed towards a completely new and unique target molecule for treatment of inflammation. And this is based on the founders' research at Umeå University. So it goes back 50 years in time when they discovered this protein. It was in another context, but later on it was seen that BSSL or bile salt stimulated lipase is involved in the inflammatory process. And during our development, we have uh, progressed and we were listed on NASDAQ First North in April 2021. And one of our previous speakers here, f f representing Fleury Invest, is one major shareholder together with uh, Christian von Koenigsegg, the Kraftfurt Foundation with family, and the founders and management, and that is essentially 80% of the ownership. Chronic inflammation affects hundreds of millions of people, and it's a very, very wide definition. And um, uh, inflammation is a natural process, important for our healing in the body. The problem arises when the inflammation stays, and it went, when it doesn't go away, then it becomes uh, deleterious for, for us. So <clears throat> there is one disease in particular that is called rheumatoid arthritis, or in Swedish, ledgångsrheumatism, that affects around about 1% of the global population. And it is auto, auto, uh, autoimmune disease, and it, it starts with, with uh, pain in the joints, tenderness, you have stiffness, and if it's not treated, it starts to become erosion of the bone in the joints, and then it leads to disabilities. Rheumatoid arthritis may also escalate. If it's not, not treated, it can escalate into very serious comorbidities, and among them, among uh, attack on the uh, different organs, it can also lead to cardiovascular diseases. So it's important to treat this disease. And today, the first line treatment is typically a chemical small uh, molecule and, uh, called methotrexate. It's an immunosuppressant drug, so it suppresses the immune system. Uh, it helps around about 50% of the patients, but it also has serious side effects. So for many patients, there is need for more advanced drugs. <clears throat> and among these advanced are biologics, like the anti-TNF biologics, or more sophisticated synthetic drugs, like the YAK inhibitors. <clears throat> and this is a huge market. It's projected to be worth around about 29 billion US dollar in 2029. And it's dominated by these anti-TNF biologics. Uh, now we're looking on 2029. Today it's original anti-TNF drugs that dominates. But there is now a competition from biosimilars. And that means that there is a price decrease, but still these biosimilars are sophisticated, more people are treated, so there's still expected to be a growth in this market. But there is one big problem, a major problem with these, and that is that around about 30% are non-responders. So they're not helped at all with these uh, sophisticated anti-TNF drugs. And the JOK inhibitors are associated with serious drawbacks and side effects, and there are new box warnings issued by the FDA and EMA uh, quite recently. And there is an interesting paper from Clinical Rheumatology in uh, 2019, where they listed most of these blockbuster drugs used for RA treatment. And, and uh, <clears throat> I highlight here, you can see that this is the ACR50, so American College of Rheumatology. 50 means 50% improvement in the patient. And if you look on the numbers, it's a percentage number of the, the number of patients that are actually getting 50% improvement in six months. Less than 40%. Uh, is that good enough? No, it's not good enough considering that there are side effects. So a significant number of these patients having RA are not helped by the, these advanced anti-TNF drugs or the JOK inhibitors. So there is a need for an alternative mode of action. And that is provided by 
the discovery by Lipum founders. They discovered that this molecule B as a cell is involved in the inflammatory process. And it was demonstrated in several well-established RA animal models that by blocking the B as a cell molecule, you can stop the inflammation. It was also seen from patient samples and biobank samples that patients having RA or psoriasis arthritis or juvenile idiopathic arthritis, that there is a correlation between the disease activity and the level of BSSL. So for that reason, we have developed the antibody lead candidate SOL116. <clears throat> Obviously, we have a cell line, we have a production method, and it has passed tox, tox studies, and now it is our lead candidate, and the lead indication is rheumatoid arthritis. Based on very solid preclinical data, based on the high medical need, and the fact that this is a gigantic market. But we also see that BSSL may play a role, and we have indication from a preclinical work that it has potential also for other indications, like uh, ulcerous colitis or Crohn's disease or SLE. We expect also that there are what we call expand indications number two, that there are other diseases that it might be have a, play a role, but these, of course, we cannot explore everything, so these are more uh, opportunistic from our side. So right now we are running a phase 1A study. It's a single ascending dose study. Essentially for those that are not familiar, we study the safety, the tolerability, and the pharmacokinetics. If you give a dose to one dose to one individual healthy volunteer, we monitor how does it, the K curve looks like. And this is important because we want to have a product in the end that we can dose maybe every second week or one monthly. Uh, and the data we have so far, unblinded data, looks very nice. And for that reason, we saw an opportunity to start the next part of the phase one study, phase one B study, where we give the same individual repeating doses. Uh, by then, you establish a steady state level, and you study then the pharmacokinetics, and you study safety and tolerability when you have a, a steady state level in the individual. So an overview of the clinical program is that now we start, we run both phase 1A and B in parallel, and in the, uh, the single ascending dose part, we have remaining eight patients having RA that will be included, and they are recruited right now, and that will give us an opportunity then to compare healthy volunteers with RA patients and see if there's any difference, and this is valuable information when planning for the phase two study. Uh, the phase two, I see there is uh, significant uh, corruption in that slide, but you can read it anyway. The phase two study is then planned to start uh, to be on the safe side in the first quarter 2025, and then it obviously will be based on the findings that we have from phase 1A and B. In this context, I just has to have to mention that Biologicals that have entered into clinical phase, they have a much higher probability to get the market approval in the end compared to small molecule uh, uh, drugs. Uh, and that is, of course, very encouraging. So our strategy then to build value for, for the shareholders and to get uh, a product on the market is that we focus on these safety studies on the clinical side. And the next step is to get the clinical proof of concept in rheumatoid arthritis. In parallel, we explore, in the preclinical work, we explore more indications. These indications I mentioned because we believe that we can exploit our antibody for more diseases. Uh, obviously also the mode of action is very important, not only for us, but also in the future to get the possibility for a deal with a large, uh, larger company, because everybody wants to understand the mechanism. We have a pretty good idea on the mechanism, but it can be even better. And for that reason, we work with partnering. And just some week ago, we signed a, a scientific collaboration agreement with the Department of Rheumatology at the Karolinska Institute. Uh, that will be running for two years, and it will be focusing on the role of BSL in the immune system. We also engage in an academic project in the uh, Örebro uh, University. And overall, we believe that altogether this will lead to a package 
that safeguards a good opportunity for a nice deal. Thank yeah, but you. I had a slide. I had oh. another slide. <laughs> no, continue. Well, try and just get it in as an answer to one of the questions. So, does anyone have a, a question for Aina? If not, yeah, I, I could hear one. Ulf, I think you had a question there. Yeah, I heard it because, because. Um, Was it anything to do with the last slide? <laughs> yeah, because yeah. on the preclinical side, you know, you know, it's, this is very important because. The probability to get the market approval is twice as high when you have an, a companion di diagnostics. Uh, for that reason, we have started a work to develop companion diagnostics to identify patients that are more likely to respond in a positive way with the treatment of, uh, with our SOL 116. Uh, this is, of course, for the final product, but this is also crucial uh, if we can achieve this during clinical trials, because that could give us a tool to actually differentiate between patients and recruit and include in the study only patients that we expect to, to have a positive outcome, and that will increase our probability also to have a positive uh, a primary endpoint. Well, then I have a question. Yeah. You were saying that there is a need for new treatments because there are a lot of side effects um, attached to the uh, current treatments. So what is the competition like then? You can't be the only one to pick up on this opportunity. Uh, I mean, the co competition, obviously, 20, 29 billion US dollar market, and it's, it's a very, it's a very competi competitive market. But most of the products that dominates this market in value are uh, anti-TNF drugs, anti-TNF biologics. And the biosimilars, they will, will, they will not be better. They, they will provide the same side effects. And they, you cannot expect that they will have a, a, a higher percentage of, of patients helped. So still, you have still the fundamental problem is there. What really is needed is something that have a completely new type of mode of action. And we, I mean, we obviously we know quite a lot about our mode of action, and we expect that SO116 will interact with BSSL upstream these cytokines that are treated with, with the, the, the drugs used today. Uh, and that will op open for possibilities that you can just speculate about, but it, maybe it could be also that you could combine them with the conventional drugs that are used, or they can be standalone. But at the moment, we aim for those that are non-responders. Yeah, then I have a question regarding the, the, the ongoing study, uh, and it uh, relates to the number of participants. Uh, as I read the quarterly report, it was a little bit unsure how many you will actually have to study down the line. Um, no. ca can you just expand on that a little bit and, and what you're looking to see down the road? Yeah, well, in the phase 1A study, there are 14, 40 healthy subjects, in, and they are divided into groups. And first group get a very, very low dosing, obviously, for safety reasons. But the last group get a very high dosing. And these 40 individuals have been tested. We have seen no side effects or, or uh, problems at all. But in the same time, we have received very nice pharmacokinetics, and the decay curve looks great. Uh, and for that reason, we decided to actually start the phase 1B study earlier than originally planned. And in that will be eight individuals included, and, and they will then get multiple doses. Will it stay at eight, or will, uh, will no, perhaps uh, uh, no, more it's, person? It's, it's planned for eight in one cohort. Okay. But of course, <laughs> this is science. Uh, <laughs> so of course, we, have a, we are prepared that it might be necessary to have another group of eight. Okay. Uh, as a second cohort, and that would follow afterwards in that case. But we don't believe that that it will be the case. Okay. And I saw on your, uh, on your slide that, you're, uh, that you were looking at uh, phase two initiating some, sometime in, in 2025. But you said uh, also... That work, that work is already going on because it, it, it's drafted, the design of the study is drafted, contacts with the CROs, planning, oh. and, and of course uh, it, we have to decide then how many cohorts how many RA patients in each group and other selection criteria, or inclusion criteria, and that you have to start a year ahead, a minimum. Yeah, could you be, uh, could it be that that 
that study is also uh, done a little bit in advance. Uh, uh, Hopefully, okay. <laughs> we 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 try. We always try to be conservative when we when we tell uh, timelines, yeah. because otherwise investors and others get disappointed. So it's better to have later and then start it earlier than expected, than the, the other way around. And that's what we try to do. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Anna, for that. Oh, we have one more question, which I think we can squeeze in. Um, yeah, I'm just wondering about the administrative, administrative uh, route of uh, this antibody, mm -hmm. uh, since uh, BSSL is quite an important hydrolase. You mean the, 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 the drug formulation or no, uh, how no. this, uh, uh, how, how it would be administered, basically? Yeah, it will be an injectable like, 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 uh, like well. other biologics that are used for, for anti-TNF treatment, for instance. Okay. So it, we have a formulation that is maybe not really final, but close to final, uh, and it will be an injectable, and ideally it will be injected once a month. And, and uh, it's not a local treatment, it's, uh, it's a systemic treatment.